All right, so let's talk long curly hair, light corners, and why are these barbers cutting my clients? Hmm? All right, cool. If you're not a sheer user, you don't like using scissors, let's go ahead and grab the number six because that's what I went ahead and used on Gio. And Gio is somebody that I've been cutting with long hair for quite a while. He's gone for the mohawk, with the V in the back for a few years. I think it's been like two years since I've been cutting Geo. And you know, it was a cut I didn't really care for for a while because it was just so detailed. And Geo is definitely one of those people that's picky. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're gonna talk about washing his hair. I did two rounds with shampoo. And you know, you have to come back with the conditioner. Okay, make sure you lock it in, get it in there nice and tight, right? And then after you get done with that, you wanna make sure you come back with cold water cold enough to close that hair cuticle up all right you, you want to contain the nutrients from the conditioner you want to contain it and close it with cold water You know, I have had a two week journey. I was just taking classes with Joshua P and we'll talk about that in another video. But you know, when I look at my process for this haircut and what I came to learn in the last two weeks, let me just say, I would never do it like this ever again, but I still wanna show this journey. Let's just say, don't completely follow this. This is what you would do if you don't really have a solid process. And for those that have been following me for quite a while, you know I haven't always had a solid process and I just kinda wing it. But you know, those days have come to an end, boys and girls, the future is looking bright. Now, after I got done using the number five or all the way around the ridge, I come back with the number six, the same number six that I used to go with the grain. Now I'm going against the grain around the fringe area. I want to tighten it up a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's almost like a fade process. You start with a high guard and then you lower it a little bit. As you see, I went from a six to a five. And that was just to tighten it up for when I come back to edge it up. But we're not there yet. We're going to get there. We're going to focus on the sides again. And it's a little unorganized like I already mentioned but just just follow me we're on a journey this video is about happy mistakes all right so let's keep going I had used the number four and now we're on the number three it's almost like a fading down process because Gio you know when he came to me that day he told me that he wanted to cut all his hair off and I'm like dope can you come back later in the day because we, we you know time's too tight right now and he said that he wanted to do a low fade he ended up coming later in the day shout out to Gio and you know I don't really care for low fades like at all uh but i have come to grow and in this process i don't really stamp with trimmers like i normally do in other videos i go ahead and use my clippers yo hold up i don't know if y'all peep game right now but your boy got some new clippers all right i don't know if you can see the new cover on that thing but yo shout out to joseph from clipper crafters he reached out to me and he wanted to make a custom made yo Fonz clipper cover all i gotta say is this is my first custom cover and it feels great I must say. I don't know how many of you get lost in these low fades. There's so many ways you could finesse a low fade. And by finesse, I don't mean like it's a low quality and you just sell the haircut like that. No, I mean just shortcuts. I feel, I truly feel like fading down for these low fades for beginners is such a must. Even for people that have been cutting for a while, I really recommend it. Like right now, I went from the three all the way down to a one now, right? I'm using a lot of my corner work. It's, it's kind of like thinning out areas, right? So if you use the blade or the guard all the way on a section, you're lightening that section up more. If you use your corners, you're making it to where you're just detailing those little dark areas that you see once in a while. You don't want to just create another section by having the blade laid all the way on the scalp, all right? Speaking of corners, we're about to uh, line this corner up 
and you know I like to come back with hairspray boys and girls and you know if you can see this this hand gesture that's that's me covering his face because I'm using the blow dryer to dry the hairspray up and then we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure as you can see right now I start with the end of the vertical bar right and i just kind of create that initial line right not on an angle pretty much straight ahead and then from there i just go from the bottom and connect it to the top okay and that's that's pretty much how i go about my c cup geo doesn't like that real intense c cup where once it grows back it looks kind of kind of rough he doesn't like that one so i didn't go too you know too enhanced on this one Now, after that beautiful unorganized process was done on the side, we're gonna merge these things in the middle, all right? The back, that's what I leave for last because that's usually the most dense area to work with. And the sides, as you can see on him, is really, really dense. And when, when it comes to working on this back side of a haircut, right? You wanna spread the blend a little bit higher than what you do on the sides because you have the occipital bone right there that kind of creates a darker shade. When, when you're dealing with darker shades on top of having dense hair, you know, things could get a little challenging, all right? So keep that in mind when you're fading the back side of a haircut. And last thing, well not last, but just enjoy your work. Step back once in a while, enjoy your work. Look, Gio's enjoying this, right Gio? Yeah. And so after you enjoy your work and step back, you want to prepare yourself for what's next. And that's the lineup, okay? Now Gio, you know, he has curly hair that's kind of wavy and, and, and just does his own thing. So, you know, I, I'm pretty much <laughs> wasting my time right now trying to style that. I mean, it's not wasting my time, but you know, I'm trying to style the hair first, I guess, because in my mind, I'm like, if I style the hair, Geo, um, you know, and, and going ahead and, you know, poke and pull the hairs, giving it, you know, more texture, it's going to make it to where I don't move the hairline, right? So fair enough, fair play, Fonz. After that, you also want to make sure you comb the hair down once you start lining this up. And as you can see, I walked away for a little bit and Geo thought, you know, he could do a quick stare down of what's going on. So I saw that, Geo, I saw that. Don't think I didn't see that, boy. And you know, whatever, you keep going. Another thing you gotta look out for is the side that Gio's a little light on. And you know, we're gonna go ahead and help you out, Gio, at least for the day of applying pressure is a must. And especially if they want these corners sharp apply a little pressure with the beam team machine all right and then you know spread the the color out you know spread the enhancement out with the brush with your finger however you feel to get the job done i will do that comb the hair a little bit make sure everything's properly spread out and then i come back with some fibers use whatever fiber you want every time you do enhancements you want to step back look at it and apply where it needs to be applied right now we're gonna apply it on the other side and the other side is a little bit different it's not too much lighter it looks like he had a scar right there right so we have to apply pressure a little bit differently i do a little bit at a time on that side and i don't want the spray to be a wide shot i want it to be just really really direct on that spot and after that just like the other side i come back with the fibers And after you do that, you know, you just apply pressure where you, I'm saying apply pressure a lot, apply pressure where you need to be. And if you want to waste some time, go ahead and bust out your texturizing shears because I sure wanted to waste time on this day. Let's not do that ever again, Fonz. So after that, though, we're going to go ahead and get some more product. At this point, you don't need more product, especially if you apply product while the hair is wet. 
but it, I don't think I applied any product when the hair was wet. So I came back and tried to uh, apply a little bit of clay, not pressure. You thought I was going to say pressure. No, clay. And at this point, I'm kind of focusing on styling, right? I come back with the hairspray. The only thing, well, there's a lot of things like I already mentioned that I would never do again after the class that I've already taken, but I'm not spraying directly to the hair anymore. I kind of like missed it up. After that, we're going to go ahead, clean the face out. I don't have to get everything really low as long as it's low enough for the shaver to come back and grab you're good to go and I, oh another thing that i've been doing differently is i have two separate shavers now i have one for the ball fades and i have one for the face so i don't kind of you know you know you know what i'm talking about So you dropped the hair, you took unnecessary steps to get to this fade. It's okay though, because it's a beautiful mistake. And at the end of the day, what you want is to get to the final point, the final product, what your client wants, whether it's one way or the other, get there. Now, I must say, if you have a process, life is so much easier. So Gio, just know, I appreciate you, bro, because you, sir, look different. I did mention something earlier that I didn't cover yet. And that's that my clients now, well, not all of them, just some of them that can't book with me on time anymore. They're starting to go to other barbers, guys. That's the new problem that I'm having. But it's not one though that I'm upset about. It's actually pretty, pretty dope to see that I'm starting to get booked that much now, guys, where my clients are struggling to get booked with me and they're having to go to the other barbers. But it's dope. I'm happy. Other than that, guys, that's the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.